Welcome back. You are watching the Sunday Footy Show. Bulldog supporters, you've been waiting for this one. Nath, tell us all about the win. Yeah, the away from home win in Ballarat. The Bulldogs are fantastic. Let's have a look at the scores and some of the goal scorers because they were terrific. Hip would kick two for the Lions, but it was a tough day down there forward end. But Tim English forward. Aaron Norton could have had a big day. Libby we spoke about. McRae, Trelaw playing through the midfield a little bit more at the stoppages. And Dunkley was outstanding. But uh, it's a great pleasure that we introduce a man who kicked 10 goals last week. Josh Bruce from the Western Bulldogs. He didn't kick 10 yesterday, Josh, but it was a great team performance. 81 tackles yesterday for your side was outstanding. Yeah, morning, boys. Yeah, no, it was a good win down in Ballarat. It was obviously um, wet and woolly and a bit cold, but uh, the boys got to work, and I think Bevo mentioned it. it was a workmanlike performance and came away with the win, which is the main thing. And, yeah, some of the big boys got on the end of it uh, this week. Obviously, Tim had a really strong day out up forward, and, uh, yeah, Naughty had seven scoring shots, so... Um, yeah, it was, it was a good win, a really good win against a, you know, a preliminary finest for the last oh. couple of years. So. It was a great win. You showed the defensive side of your game, which people have been wanting to see as well as the attacking. But going back quickly to last week when uh, Luke Beveridge got everybody out, you kicked seven and he just realised that there might have been ten on the cards. It must have, your eyes must have lit up last week knowing that you are a big chance to kick ten when he pushed everyone up. Yeah. Yeah, that was a pretty unique feeling. I, I felt like I was playing in the 80s or something again, you know. Um, clear the 50 and, uh, yeah, no, it was pretty special. So, um, yeah, a really, a really good day out, which is fantastic. So, Hey, Josh, you guys are playing great football at the moment. You've had some brilliant wins. You've taken the scalp of the West Coast Eagles. You've taken the scalp of Collingwood. You've now taken the scalp of, of the Brisbane Lions as well. Talk us through where you reckon you've improved as a playing group from last year. Yeah, it's a good call. I, mean, I think the thing that's um, improved with us is just our balance as a side. I feel like um, there's not necessarily guys having absolutely unbelievable games, um, you know, consistently. Our, our really good players are, are playing strong footy, but there's other guys that are stepping up, and it's the whole 22 that are, are really contributing each week. And I feel like that balance through the side and the consistency of that is allowing us to, to have strong performances against good sides. and. You know, I feel like we're starting to hit that age demographic and age bracket, um, you know, where the guys are hitting that perfect kind of um, between 25 and 28 region. They've all played enough footy and um, it's all coming together nicely so far. Josh, just a quick one from me. Um, do you live in your car? <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's so cold. I'm actually going to pick up the kids, uh, Baby Chino and the Mrs. A try. So oh, uh, oh. I was... On the way to the cafe, but I'm on the way back home now. <laughs> so she'll be oh, watching yeah. at home. Yeah. He might be tucked away. He'll be a little late. That's hey, all. We asked you about Tim English. So did you see this coming at the start of the year? So Steph Martin comes to the club. He's going to help out the ruck duties. But it's rare that you can throw a ruckman forward and Central him have the impact that he's having and just the way he moves at that size. Yeah, he's an incredible athlete, Tim. He's uh, he's always at the front of the running groups in pre-season. And, I mean, I mean, the Moz has been on him about his size. And when he's playing 90% ruck against the Monsters, then, you know, he's, he's bound to get pushed around because he's only a, still a young player. He's 21 or 22. Um, you know, he's, he's got a real knack for playing up forward and he takes the ball at the highest point. And, obviously, with the matchups that that he's getting, being the third tall at times, he's, he's getting a really good look at the footy and, and you know, in the forward line. Um, with the three of us working well together so far, it's it's um, it's challenging for teams to match up on the three. So, And, Josh, you've already touched on the third member of that uh, trio in, in Aaron Norton having the seven shots at goal. Only, though, for a, a two-goal, five return. He's He's got a bag of ten in him at some stage of, of this year, the way he's going, do you feel? Yeah, <laughs> I think he's in, for a, he's in for a nice long career, Aaron. I don't think I've played with a player that hits the footy as hard as he does. He's, um, his attack in the air and at ground level is, is second to none. And we're just starting to see the, the fruits of his hard work. You know, he's got one of the best attitudes in terms of training that I've come across. And, you know, if his body can stay uninjured and he can, you know, he's got everything, everything else. He's got all the tricks in the book. And, you know, he's also another young player. He's, he's 21. So uh, the future is very bright for, uh, for young Norts and, um, Loving playing second and third fiddle to those boys at the moment. It's great. I'd love to know what you did in the off-season and through the pre-season. Uh, Luke Beveridge lauded your professionalism and, I guess, right, your new lean figure this year. 14 goals from 17 games last year. You had that mark at round three. Take us through what your off-season looked like. For his career, 
Yeah, I had. I mean, I've spoken about it in the last week or so, but I had some really honest conversations um, with some people that I trusted, and, and my self awareness is, is pretty strong. I knew I definitely wasn't at my best, and I had some I had some big struggles last year with being in the hub, you know, mentally and obviously physically. I was I was out of shape as well. So, um, you know, I came into this season just really wanting to, to change my physique and change the way that, um, you know, I was training and approaching the game. So I got a personal trainer in. I did a lot of work in the off-season and really trimmed down. And then, um, yeah, essentially, that's, that's pretty much it. And I've done, you know, everything to the letter um, in terms of professionalism, which, you know, is probably something that I, you know, I wasn't at my best in the last couple of years, for sure. So, um and it's really refreshing to to be enjoying my footy again. I think it's another big one. I mean, I definitely started to fall out of love with the game last year. I, I really wasn't enjoying my footy. Um, you know, I found it a real slog up there. And, you know, it's really refreshing to be back down here with a young group. Yep. It's really exciting. The fans are back out. Um, just, yeah, really loving my footy again. I think and you are the side, and the side are getting reaping the rewards. Sorry, TJ, let's have a look at the votes quickly. Tim English was the best man on the ground. Adam Trelaw was terrific. Jack McRae just continues to get 30-plus every week. And Hugh McCluggies, I thought his first half in particular for the Brisbane right. Lions was terrific. Hey, I hope you got a station wagon there, Josh, because uh, Billy's got a stack of prizes for you. I have, uh, Funky Brewster, don't worry about that. <laughs> a dozen Callaway Chrome Soft Golf Balls in the Odyssey Tower. Uh, there, that is magnificent. Uh, four... Travis Matthew Caps, that's four, to keep a lid on it at the golf course. Oh, look at this, the Aquila shoes and clothing. Been around since 1958. We all wear it. We all love the Aquilas. Mm. Bar Fridges Australia. Uh, just ring Corey on Friday and get 10% off from Bar Fridges Australia. They are the best bar fridges in Australia, Tony. You know that. Yeah, we've got one. You have. Ricks, you've got to pay for it too. Ricks, a pair of Ricks <laughs> eyewear. Just use the code word CHOMPERS at rickseyewear.com.au <laughs> for 20% off. That's, that's not right, is it? It yeah. says it here. Why would I read it? Platform 28. Oh, Mark O'Reilly, our friend there. Lauder. Dinner for two at uh, our favourite restaurant, Platform 28. Lauder. Oh, magnificent. I think it's uh, the calamari and dim sims. They're a phenomenal. So calamari Bruce and dim sims. Sim. That's yeah, a funny dim, dim sum. They're and dim the red. Sum. They're not like the old-fashioned... And we're going to get to the fire pit. <laughs> this is your own custom-made fire pit, thanks to AMFX. Speak to Alan and the team. AMFX metal, art, 100% Australian-made. All for you, Joshy boy. Thanks, Bill. I was up all night watching the Masters, so uh, I'm, I'm going to need the golf balls. Uh, who's sure in front, please? Again. Who's in front? What's his... Uh, Hideki Matsuyama, first Japanese player to be in front in the Masters ever. So mm, good luck. Matsuyama, yeah, right? I'll tell you what, well, I'll tell you what you, mate, you could be a sports presenter in retirement. Oh, no. <laughs> That's bad news for Clint Stanley. Yeah, get me a job. <laughs> <laughs> get me a job, <laughs> Good on you, Josh. Great to catch up with you. Go and deliver those coffees, mate. I will. Thanks, boys. Have Thank a good day. You